let me show you how you as a developer can use SEMCOM components in your app. Here, you can see a small application that I've built to show the contents of a pod. However, right now, when I'm coding this application, I don't know what kinds of data the user has stored in his or her pod. Does the pod contain only identity information, or does it also contain other information like his or her payslips, blood types, or even his or her DNA data? Luckily, to solve this problem, I could rely on Digitus SEMCOM. SEMCOM makes it easy for developers to dynamically load web components for different and unknown kinds of data. In my app, I use the SEMCOM SDK to easily query the SEMCOM network and render the right shapes. So when we run our demo application and log in as Tia, you can see that the contents of her pod are rendered. Let me explain what happened under the hood. There are two major actions that take place. Finding compatible components for a given shape and creating elements from a component. Let's start with the first major action, finding compatible components. First, the detect shapes function of the SEMCOM SDK scanned Tia's profile document of her pod and found among others, a person shape and a payslip shape. Let's take a look at the code. Here you see the detect shapes function in action. You give detect shapes the URL to an RDF document. It will scan the document and create a list of data shapes, which in their current form are RDF classes. Second, the query metadata from shapes of the SEMCOM SDK queried the SEMCOM network using this list of shapes or any other shape we might have added to get a list of components. In the code, you can also add additional requirements. For example, you could filter by a version of a component to make sure you always get the latest. The SEMCOM node will find all components that are compatible with the given shapes. From there, you get a list of components that you can work with which can be filtered down to include only the components you actually want. It's completely up to the application to select the components it wants to use. Ideally, the application would select one component per data shape it needs. Third, the app had to register the components with the browser before they could be used. As you can see in the code, I've made a simple SDK call to register component from metadata. Based on the registration, the SDK will give you a tag that can be used to add the component to your HTML. Note that if you want a specific shape, you can add it to the query metadata from shapes, and if you want a specific component, you can provide the URI to that component to register it. In the second major action, the app had to create an element from a component. In your code, you do this by creating DOM elements for each tag and adding event listeners to the elements that describe how data is given to the component from the application. SEMCOM was designed so that it is the application that decides what data is sent to the component. The component simply asks for data in a certain form, such as JSON, quads, text, etc. The component itself does not have direct access to any data. 